Hi everyone, welcome to my video. I just wanted to share really quickly that if you did happen to see this video go up last week, um, you'll know what it's about. I did re-record part of the audio because I felt I was very confusing in some parts and that I was actually causing some alarm and some concern where there really shouldn't be any. So re-recorded some of the audio and here it is again for those of you that didn't get to see it. Here is my Hartley philodendron. It's getting ready for a bath or I should say a shower, actually. Uh, this is the day when it's time to really take care of my philodendron to make sure that I get all of the dust off their leaves. I've already been outside with my philodendron cellum who's summering on the patio and has gotten so huge I thought I'd have to plant it in the ground uh, before the summer's over. However, it looks like I'm gonna be able to bring it back inside for one more winter and then I might be planting it next spring. Uh, I live in zone 9B and so it will be large and hardy enough to take a winter uh, where I am. So I'm just now showering my leaves off on my Hartley philodendron, which in comparison is tiny. It's actually looking quite a bit bigger than when I got it just a few weeks ago, but it is the growing season and it's popping out new leaves. So this plant was quite dusty when I got it already. And to be honest, it matched about the same level of dustiness as the philodendron that it hangs out with in my house. It's definitely, I like to do this every three months, but I'm about a month overdue and I really don't have a good excuse as to why. Here's my philodendron in Brazil, uh, because I do have a lot of plants that need distilled water, which means that bringing them here to the sink, putting them in this wire rack and rinsing them off, I can't do that. I have to kind of go after them with uh, spray bottles filled with distilled water, and it's, it's a much different process. It's not quite as simple as this is. So here's the Brazil. It is looking very leggy. Um, so I'm really thinking about its position and where it is because I ha I'm taking cuttings because it's gotten so bare at the top that I want to um, plant um, with it so that I can make it a little bit more fuller and I'm kind of testing that out right now and I'll show you the propagation uh, a little bit later. But I'm trying to figure a few things out with the Brazil because one, not only do I know that I need to switch its light up most likely, I also, or or add a grow light, which might be what I, what I do with this plant. Um, I also need to think about why I have a lot of leaves that are either almost or are, are completely lime green. Uh, that's something I really wanted to avoid. And I've seen other people talk about it happening with their plants online, but I haven't seen good suggestions. And as usual, I get some awesome expert opinions in my comments, suggestions for what I can do, for care, um, history of some of the plants that I have, and I really appreciate all of that information. I know it's useful to more than just myself, so please, if you know something um, about why these philodendrons start to just sort of, I don't know, to be honest, I don't know the history of the Brazil. For all I know, these started out lime green and um, then were cultivated to develop some of the other um, dark green on them and they revert eventually to just the lime green. I really don't know, but if you do, again, I'd love it if you'd share it with me because I do love this plant. Um, and this is where I took the cutting. So this is where I'm kind of testing it out. I am brooding it in water and I'll show that to you um, because I do. I want to make it a little bit more full. Um, I really don't like it when my trailing plants get this bare at the top. Uh, and so we'll, I'll try to work on that here really soon but these two have really been hanging out the hartley philodendron and the philodendron brazil uh they hang out with the meekins vine if you've probably seen it in other videos and i love this rack because when i'm done rinsing them it's so easy just to let them drain and dry here there's a fan nearby so they get great air circulation i don't have to worry about fungus so here is my philodendron birkin and this is its newest leaf right here in the center it's a little bit lighter green as you can see and it actually has some of the markings um i offered to show my birkin in a video because um, there were some questions about its markings in uh, a comment and so i wanted to show this is what it looked like when i got it and you can see it's a juvenile plant it's very young here uh, it came bare root 
and healthy. It looked good. Uh, however, you'll notice there are really no markings that make the philodendron birkin distinct. Um, the look at that root system. My calatheas have such a delicate root system that in comparison when I look at my philodendrons, it's always a little bit of a surprise. Um, however, again, um, the birkin had no markings and I think that there's a lot of questions about that. What actually um, can we attribute to increasing the variegation on the philodendron birkin's leaves? And so I've had a lot of really great direct messages from folks on Instagram and I wanted to go ahead and just, if maybe they'll share them in the comments here if they feel comfortable. Um, however, I wanted to just share my experience with the Birkin and the variegation while I'm here kind of rinsing everybody off anyway. And that has been that when I got this plant, again, had very little variegation. So what I did with it is I took it, I put it into an Eastern window and this is the result. You see the newest leaf here having quite a bit more uh, variegation. That is its newest leaf in the center right there that's forming but not out yet. And all I can say is it looks like as the plant is maturing and as its exposure to sunlight increases, I am seeing uh, more variegation in its newest leaves. So even that small leaf down there that is still yet to fully develop, I can see more markings on that than any, even rolled, than any of these other leaves here that, it, that it, I've had, you know, since I've gotten the plant, they've been there. But this newest leaf has those kind of, they're not as dark, they're a little bit more faint, but those very telltale sort of Birkin variegation markings on the leaf. So I wanted to share that um, because again, there were questions. Here is my black cardinal, and like I was saying, it is nowhere near to having black leaves. Um, you can see some of its oldest leaves down here at the bottom are starting to yellow. Uh, I'm gonna let them just completely dry up to the point where when it's time, I can just pull them off and they'll, they'll come right off. I don't like removing them before that point. Um, but this plant, like my others, is very dusty. It's got Interestingly enough, a ton of growth here at the base, so it's really filling out uh, down here at the bottom, almost growing these sort of new plants at the base. And then it's popping out some new leaves like this one. When they come in, they're very red, and then as they mature, they darken like these other have right here. But again, its oldest leaves are starting to, you know, wither away. Its new leaves uh, are coming in both at the top and at the base and in varying shades. So I've got dark green leaves on some of the more established parts of the plant and then, you know, leaves like this that are coming from the new growth at the bottom tend to be a little bit more green. And so that's just how it looks right now. Um, I'm really happy with its progress and I'm really interested to see what shape it's gonna take as it's, as it's maturing. And you can see it here a little bit more overhead uh, directly overhead what its shape really looks like and honestly I didn't expect it to fill out at the bottom so much I don't know if these are plants that I'm gonna be able to divide off of it eventually um, I really don't know and again that's one reason I like to buy plants uh, that are pretty young because I do like to learn for myself what really does happen with them however I then I have these small plants I don't have these like striking huge plants in my house sometimes and that's just something that I think um, I made a decision about because I also like to have a lot of plants and so I need to be able to have space. And when I wanna wash them, it's nice that I can fit, when they're this small, I can fit them all on this wire rack, let them dry off, um, let them drain, and it doesn't take long. So here's that cutting that I was telling you about that I took off of my Brazil. You can see these leaves down here are small and they're very lined. Um, here are the roots, you know, I've got the two larger roots that came out of the node, and now these other, I forget the name of these, ugh, but they're just starting to form these smaller roots that kind of shoot out. And I have a lot of these old pharmacy bottles, and so I like to do cuttings in here in water. I have no trouble transferring them to potting soil uh, myself, so I don't mind doing it in water, and I, I think it's an interesting, like, focal point, and I like the way that it looks on the shelf. I'm also doing it, not with, this isn't a philodendron, of course, this is a pothos, but I took some cuttings. This is probably only a week old, the other cutting's more like two and a half. 
and this was taken from my Marble Queen as well as my Golden Pothos and I think I'm gonna give this to a friend um, as kind of like this little kind of hybrid uh, plant as soon as it's ready to pot. So anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. Please, please leave comments, suggestions in the um, comments below. And until next time, be well and take care.